Hey everybody, this is Paul, 125 Roller Coaster Challenge, and this is Janine. And we are here today doing our third break run talk. Now, these are where we basically get the opportunity to talk with people who are coaster enthusiasts, uh, people like in the business. And today we have an amazing person. Yeah, we're really excited. We love having people on that we like and respect and people whose content we think is great. And this is one of the best ones. I mean, when you go on YouTube, there's a few that I make sure I hit in the loop. Coaster Studios, Absolutely. of course. And of course, Airtime Thrills. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, here we're going to bring Chris right here into. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Hey, guys. How's it going? It's going great for me. That was great. Now, I just checked uh, your stats and stuff, uh, 65,000. We have 124 people who watch ours right now, so we're a little bit behind you. Uh, we're, we're catching up, though. We're, we're catching really up, yeah. I mean, yeah. We're, we're getting two people, like, every three days. So. Hey, you know what? With my baseball channel, that's how it is. I know how it goes. <laughs> every time you watch it, then YouTube really tortures you because it actually will tell you, like, okay, uh, this is how many people saw it in the last 30 minutes, and it's like, can I get double digits? I just right. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I don't want to have a baseball, like um, – you know, batting average here. I want more than, <laughs> yeah. you know, I want to bat better than the Phillies right now. Well, definitely Chris <laughs> oh my gosh, the Phillies are telling me right mm -hmm. now. It's like, so, well, first of all, what uh, I know you're a coach enthusiast. You're over in the, uh, over the West Coast. And now you're over in Oklahoma. Yep. So, what made you go YouTube? So, you, you so I was on Instagram first. And, um, it was just, it was my wife's uh, idea to just, you know, get a, a page started to post pictures. And I was like, okay, yeah, sure, let's do this. And um, I've always been a fan of ranking things. So I was like, well, like I didn't, in terms not really good for that. I was like, I should do a YouTube channel where I can just like do rankings. And um, that's why like 90% of my videos are rankings because that's what I like to do. So, um, so I just decided to do that. And um, I also like history. So I wanted to do some like mini documentaries and that kind of grew the channel to what it is now. Um, so... It just kind of snowballed from there. It went from a hobby to almost like a little industry. It's amazing how quickly there, and that's exactly what we loved about your uh, your stuff. I mean, uh, one of the things, uh, one of my questions I had here is, which is your favorite type of content to do? Is it the rankings? And uh, now you're doing the uh, best and worst and the buy and sells. Uh, mm -hmm. Which one are you most interested in? What gets you like really excited about the next video? So uh, the, the documentaries are, are a lot of fun, the, especially the, the mini documentaries. Problem is, is that there's not that many topics that have been covered that are interesting to do. Like I was able to do one on Pilgrim's Plunge. No one had done that. I don't think anyone had really done a really deep dive on roles of adventure. So I was able to do that. There's just not that many topics out there. So that's why I'm kind of moving more into the long form documentaries. So I, I did one on Magic Mountain last year, which was a full two hour runtime. And yes, then I'm doing one for Kings yeah. Island this year, which I'm working on currently this week. And I'm oh, hoping to release that in about a month. 50th anniversary, perfect time yep. for it. Yep, that's why I'm doing it. So, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so um, it's going to be another five-part documentary. Um, I'm hoping to drop that in about five weeks, um, one okay. episode per week. That's great. Yep, and like I said, you have a lot of different subscribers. I look forward to because you do what at least one a week, sometimes two or three. I I, I do a video every Monday and Thursday, and, and um, once in a while I'll, I'll drop something on the weekend if it's a special occasion, something I don't want to like. I, I kind of, I think, I, I kind of, I feel like I owe it to my viewers to give them something substantial on Mondays and Thursdays. If I have something kind of trivial, or like a quiz or something, like kind of a joke, um, I'll put it on the weekend. Okay. Yeah, we try to do Tuesdays for the podcast, and then we try to do like this one. We're gonna mm -hmm. pretty much on a Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Try yeah. to keep uh, space it out there. But last week I had a real tough episode. I couldn't. We are. With our podcast, my son and I were doing the 125, see if we could do 125 every year. Mm -hmm. And we were getting so close to 125 that we literally hit quasi in like 40 minutes and got out of there. And now I'm mm -hmm. trying to do an episode. I'm like, I don't actually remember this park. Uh, it was like a blur. So I'm like going through the history books and I'm like, okay, I got to give these guys an episode. But, you know, it was the hit and run. We were so excited to get the 125 that we were just like, okay, this is get Wooden Warrior and get out of here. All right, so, I think I remember your original 125. I, I, maybe it wasn't your original because I, I didn't know that you did that every single year, which is oh, really talked, awesome. COVID really slowed that down a bit there. So Yeah. Um, no, but this was several years ago. This is probably 2018. Yeah, probably was, was kind of like how you were. It was with my son. I wanted to chronicle what we were doing. So we did a Facebook page. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the year, we're like, we have 8,000 people following us. Uh -huh. Okay. What are we going to, you know? Yeah, that was really wild. That and was, you were like, oh, we have like three, that, we have like four. That. I was like... I literally think I said to you at that point, I was like, 
who cares about what you guys are exactly doing? i was doing it so when i'm getting gone he can go back and go, oh my dad and i did this that one year and it was just amazing to me that you know it just snowballed and then you and i were talking about the podcast because right, right. I, i'm a photographer she's in the wedding business we're both in the wedding yeah. business i'm afraid of video so mm -hmm. if you go check out our page it's basically okay i'm gonna walk through here and talk because i'm afraid to start trying to get into editing because <laughs> yeah. i'm the kind of person that's going to snowball and you uh -huh. never you know i'm like uh heck with your wedding i got this to do you know and i'm like oh wait that pays me uh, i gotta go to the one that pays me so now the other thing you do too which is great which is the uh, raw footage so um why did you decide to just you know basically copyright free i believe correct yeah yeah so i mean if you watch my channel you'll see that i borrow from so many other people because i i want to do videos about a whole lot of things and i don't always have footage of it um a lot of it's a lot of stuff's defunct a lot of stuff's overseas uh, or just parks I haven't been to. So um, I just really appreciate when people make their stuff available. And I just more of like, I really wanted to pay it forward. Um, like, I, I really love it when people make that stuff, you know, like, you, go ahead, use whatever you want. Uh, just give credit, no problem. Um, so I was like, I'm going to shoot footage and I'm going to make it available for everyone too. And I want to make it very uh, explicit saying like this stuff is for you to use. You don't have to feel bad about using it or feel nervous about copyright strikes. I have well over 200 videos on there at this point. I'm yes. hoping that people are making use of it because um, it, it doesn't c cost me much time or anything. It's just, you know, I'm gonna throw some clips out there, download it, it's all yours. Yeah, I'm learning that too. It's it's kind of funny that once you start getting the footage, it's so reusable and stuff. And I actually, uh, when I first thought about doing the YouTube just because it, it seems like a normal extension of what we do. Uh, you know, we're already hitting the parks. I know I've already, I already hit about six or seven already. We're trying yeah. to get you, but she's got a store that she owns, so she's kind of... One of us is chained to this massive building we're in every day. And I just need my cell phone because I've actually booked weddings while in line for Iron Quasi. <laughs> you uh, don't even need your cell phone. You've done that with watch. your watch. I've done it with watch. So, yeah, so. But, um, yeah, oh, so a couple <laughs> things here. Uh, so which park do you think has the best lineup? Oh, man. So, um, yeah, that's... I'll figure out throw one at you real quick. Right, right on the spot, huh? Um, yeah. I always said that Six Flags Great America has possibly the most round, most well-rounded lineup. Yeah, um, that one. And, just... and I might have to stick with that. Um, it may not have the most elite coasters at the top, but top to bottom, um, I think that most might be the most well-rounded. Uh, and I also think that Cedar Point has the most quality coasters yeah they got the world records they they tried it well i'm still surprised that they gave bow raven like two years with the record before they actually bought uh yukon striker, UConn striker. Like, wow yeah. they gave something to canada here and it didn't just stay at cedar point there um yeah. they get the record for three years they figured the shine wore off by then move on yeah, if you haven't ridden it we'll take your money at a different park exactly. to ride one that's about 10 feet taller i do give them credit yeah. Because my biggest pet peeve with Griffin is you go up the lift hill and you have that beautiful view. <laughs> and then you turn and as you hang, you look at the parking lot of the brewery. And I'm like, really? Yeah. At least with Val Raven, you get to see like Lake you, Erie. You know, but I was you like, you complain about Griffin every it's time. It drives me nuts. Go because hill, he's got great, great view of the parking lot. Yeah, great view of the parking lot. Wow, looks like third shift's there today. All right, that's good for the Budweiser. The, the only coaster I've noticed that about is Cannibal because Cannibal, it's so well themed and everything. And then it's like, you're in this dungeon and then all of a sudden they open up the, the screen. You're like, Oh, there's the parking lot. <laughs> exactly. And people always complain. I know uh, coastal studios did a whole thing about the parking lot at gatekeeper, but I don't even notice that. Cause I'm just so excited for the overwing yeah, drop that I'm like, it doesn't yeah. bother me yeah. because I think it's about being part of the parking lot rather that, than, I think that's true. That's true. Gatekeeper. That's part of the appeal is that it's kind of part of the parking lot. Right. Exactly. I mean, I, gatekeeper. I give it a pass, but we also make fun of um, six flags. Great. Uh, I'm sorry, Great Adventure, oh. because they've literally put a oh, roller yeah. coaster in the parking lot, and, and, and there is no parking lot anymore. But also, look at uh, King's Dominion. I just exactly. came back there, and literally, you could like this was part. This was preferred parking, and now it's yeah. dominated. And now it's a roller coaster. Yeah. Yes. So overrated coasters. I mean, for us, well, at least you. Which one? Oh, Maverick. She's not a big Maverick fan. Mm -hmm. I, I Maverick. agree with you on that. I, I mean, I, I don't hate Maverick. It's in my top fifty. But uh, it's like number thirty-five or something. So I think it's I, I, my biggest my biggest problem with it is the restraints. If it had Velocicoaster restraints, I'd be perfectly fine with it. Um, I think it's like a good long ride and everything. It's got a lot of good forces. I just hate the stupid over-the-shoulder restraints. They they drive me nuts. The thing that bugs me most with that is you have such a great intense second launch, 
and then it's trimmed as soon as you go up the hill. Yep, so, yeah, that was that, that made my buzzkills video is that trim over this over that hill after the launch. It's yeah, like, what's the point of having that humongous launch? Thank you. That's why I like Chris. That's why I've always liked his videos because I was like, that kills the entire ride because it's a great launch. You turn and then you stop at the top of the hill. Now I understand it's so, probably because the G's that it's pushing, but yeah, yeah. I mean, they got to protect the ride too, um, and and also people's necks. Exactly. But, so Maverick's a good choice. Um, Intimidator 305, I don't consider that overrated just because I, it's not my it's not my thing. But I can see if people love a coaster like that, then the, that's why they like it so much. But it's just not me personally. The one I think is really overrated is Kumba. Okay. And it's just because it's, it, like I, I wrote it and I was like, okay, like it's a big giant B and M looper. It's like exactly. Wildfire. It's kind of like Riddler's Revenge if it was a sit down coaster. Uh, I didn't think it was spectacular. I thought Montu was spectacular, but I didn't yeah, think Kumbo was. Montu knocked my clock off. I, when you hear a lot of the hype, you kind of go into it with, uh, really? And the first time I rode Montu, I did a front seat, and I was like, okay, it's good. And then um, a ride attendant pulled me over and says, because I was wearing a coaster shirt, he's yeah. like, you went the back left. And when I mm -hmm. did it, I was like, okay. And I married yeah. that until I passed now from it. The deaf seat. Yeah, the deaf seat. And now all the inverts, I try that seat now. Because yeah. we're lucky. We have Talon, which is definitely underrated. We do. Talon is good. Underrated. Really yeah. underrated is Talon, but Great Bear. So we're, we're in a good little lo location. We're mm -hmm. kind of right between Hershey. I actually met you briefly in front of. I, yep, I remember. It was me and Zach. Yep. Yeah. yeah we're 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 Sky Rush. I was like, you got that piece of junk? And then when I realized who it was, I'm like, okay. Oh, never yeah. ironic. Yeah. Okay. He's wearing it ironically. So yeah, yeah, my daughter need help with lockers. And I'm like, well, I don't work Tuesdays or Thursdays. So <laughs> I'll help you out there because they couldn't get employees back then. So. Yeah, that, that was the day we, we actually came over to ride Sky Rush in the front row that night, and mm -hmm. we couldn't because uh, it was closed for the rain. Yep, yep. That was, that was totally row, unfortunate. Last, last row on Sky Rush. Yeah, not. that that is actually one of the original deaf seats we've had. And the, uh -huh. the front row is not the best row. All right, so underrated for you. So for for us, it's like Talon and those guys. Uh, what what would be underrated for you? Um, Sky Rush's neighbor Comet. Yes, oh, amazing oh, underrated I coaster. Comet. I just put that in the top five for at Hershey Park, and somebody was like, "Really, Comet?" I'm like, "Comet is so fun." I never realized how good Comet was until I started riding other wooden coasters. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I, I rode Sky Rush, and then rode Comet after. I was like, "Holy crap! This is a uh, much better ride than Sky Rush, and it's it's a little wooden coaster. It's crazy." Um, yeah. and especially yeah. considering you have Wildcat right there, so you're like, "Okay, this one's a lot newer yeah. than this one, but this one's a lot better kit shape." So I always thought Viper at Great America was extremely underrated just because okay. it seems like nobody ever talks about it. And it's a very solid wooden coaster. I don't love it as much as I used to, but it's still good. But I think after last year, I think my number one most underrated coaster is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal I missed Orlando. Year. I missed it this year because um, my friend got me a code that can get me into one of the parks. Mm -hmm. Velocicoaster or eh, I think I'm going Velocicoaster. So. It's understandable. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have Velocicoaster as my number six. I got Rip Ride Rocket as my number twenty, so I'll still take Velocicoaster yeah, over yeah. it. But for a top, as a top twenty coaster for me, I, I wrote it back in twenty twelve. I remember I was kind of a GP back then. I didn't really like. I remember loving it, but I thought I just thought it was like, oh, because it's fun. It has on ride audio and it has a bunch of elements. Yeah, well, and that, then everyone's like, oh, it sucks. And then well, I come back and write it last year in the back row. It just mm -hmm. blew me away. Well, what's your song? Do you need was one? What's your Rip Ride song? Really? Yeah. Okay. It was nice. it, the, I don't think they've ever changed the music. That was my song back in 2012, and then I chose it again this year. No, they <laughs> haven't changed the music, but there is that whole secret menu of music. Right. You know how to find it. You can find it. I actually got an email, a uh, text message or something like that, that uh, Blink-182 actually sent out that it's like, hey, we're one of the special songs here or something oh, like that. Oh, Rip Ride Rocket? Rip Ride Rocket for like a month or something like that. So That's hysterical. Yeah. There the, ba the band was actually, well, Mark. So I don't think. Uh, oh, yeah, well, Mark Tom Coppins doesn't was. even have anything Tom to do doesn't with that care band anymore. anymore. Yeah. The best thing they brought on board in years is also gone. So, so bye, Skiba. So what we do at this point is a rapid fire. All right. So I'm going to throw okay. a couple of these at you. Intamin, RMC, or B&M? RMC. RMC? Yeah, I got to go that way too. Mm. Uh, Universal or Disney? Universal. All right. Ooh, yeah, she died a little bit there. I'm not a Disney, I'm not a huge Disney fan. I it's not really for me. Okay. Uh so favorite snack at the park. So if you're at a park and you want to talk about a marquee snack, we are you, mm, where are you going? Oh with? man. Uh Dole Whip is always a good one. I, I, but you're a you're not a Disney person. Dole Whip, not a Disney person. Knobles has it too. And if you I mean, want, Magic Mountain had Dole Whip for forever, I I love getting it. 
I know. All of these parks have had it before Disney, but all of a sudden, like, Dole Whip is a Disney product. I know. I've seen that, too. I've seen, like, oh, everyone wants to get the Dole Whip at Disneyland. And it's like, um, is it yeah. any different than the one at Magic Mountain? I don't even know. I'm not going to pay 12 bucks for it, so I don't know. <laughs> no, they actually put a little sign up in their in their Dole Whip booth that yeah. said, like, we've had Dole Whip longer yeah. than Disney. And if you really want – get the sampler, they, they don't give you, like, a little at bit. Kenobles, they, oh, they give you, like – Mm -hmm. Or huge servings. I'm like, yeah. oh, I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. They, yeah, they give you all, all the all different flavors. You all the flavors, yeah, but it's but like it's not this like high. You would think yeah. you it in like a cup like this, like right. Flavor. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were no, shocked no. how big it was. Okay, a launch or a lift hill? Uh, lift hill. Lift hill. All yeah. right. Well, if you really like lift hills, uh, Steel <laughs> Force is about a week and a half going up there. So if you got some time to kill and you like yeah, to go. Yeah, Dorney Park, best yeah. lift hill ever. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's we best. don't care about the ride. It's the, the ride is hill. four minutes long with three minutes and three seconds of a lift, lift hill. All right. Your best Six Flags Park besides Magic Mountain. Because I know that. Oh, Great America by far. Great America, great America rivals yeah. Magic Mountain for the top spot. Because we're great adventure. So. Um, it used to be great adventure, but great adventure is killing me with those policies with the lockers and the cameras and everything. Yeah, it's but, so uh, burdensome. Yeah, on yeah, El Toro, and the though. problem is that they have all these like little kids coming in from New York City and parents using it as vacation. So it's I think it's out of all of the Sex Flags parks, it's probably the one that they have to be the hardest on. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that actually segues pretty good to something I didn't have there. But what are you thinking about the new Six Flags policies? I mean, they went from membership. You got to be a member. Got to be a member yeah. to. Yeah, we're not gonna do membership anymore. Here, here's a really expensive pass. That, that, that it confused me a lot because I was thinking memberships is amazing business model for any yep. business because you're talking about a, a never expiring thing that people will have in their bank account that they just kind of forget about that it's there. Yep. And just month after month, they never have to. It's not like you have to actively renew it. You just you just it's have to fair. never cancel it. Yep. And it, it stunned me when they took it away because that seems like that's the wave of the future is the memberships. And I was really um, impressed that they actually. Because we actually stuck with them during COVID. Yep. And I was oh, we got all the upgrades. Yeah. Elite VIP. Because yeah, I, I have like, that too. Hey, thank you for giving us something for being loyal. Yep. Now yeah. All of a sudden, I'm like, okay, how much longer do I have this? Right. Before it's all gone. Right. I'm enjoying my extra perks still. My four skip the lines every time I go to Six yep. Flags parks. All that but stuff. Still so it's, it's still too. good. We still have ours. Yep. I actually just went to Six Flags America, bought all this merchandise because we do giveaways every week, mm -hmm. and I'm like. Oh, 40 bucks. Okay. I really am going to miss this 50% off. You know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, there was one day at Great Adventure where I, I literally saved $80 Yep. that day by because of my Diamond Elite Pass because I got the Flash Pass and I got a couple of souvenirs. $80. So I was like, that that difference almost paid for the entire pass. Exactly. Uh, at least it almost paid for the entire difference between the levels to yep. justify right. Diamond Elite. It's just fantastic. Now, I was dumb. I, I used to always get the season pass food. Uh, because yep. I didn't always be locked in there. So, of course, now I'm going to have to figure out, you know, you still get 50% off, though. Uh, That's with, true. Uh, I, mean, and I, I, I use that when I, because I only have one dining pass. So when I go with all, multiple people, I have to, I've used the 50% off. Um, and it, it's, it's it's not bad at all. No, it's not bad at all. Now, the other thing, too, is will you give American Dream another chance? I will. I mean, I kind of have to. I got okay. the, the credits, right? We were um, going there on Monday and we're like, Sandy's still down. Yeah, we, yeah, it's it's, it's on a extended seasonal maintenance or something. I don't know. They're um, doing all the week. All right, it's they're, they're gonna be a long time before I get back there. Yeah, I uh, Sandy is such a rattle fest. Uh, well, I've heard it, it really. I've never lived it. That's what we've all heard. Yeah, From we've heard it. Everybody that we know that has read it, they it's a total rattle fest. Yeah, but That's I just interesting to know. I mean, I know that uh, Shellraiser had its issues with uh, potholes and stuff when yeah. I wrote it on opening day. Um, but I wouldn't know this last time. I only got to ride one or two coasters last time. Oh, yeah, so I told you the whole thing. It was like, I went there and nothing was open. So yep. we did enjoy the water park that time we went because the there's there more lifeguards than people. So yeah. it, it felt like we're like, the water park looks good. It it looks good. good. Well, it's, it's, it's hundred bucks. <laughs> more, more lifeguards than people is amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're getting blown up by people, uh, you know, asking us questions and stuff like that. Now, the next one I have is. We love your channel, but we love in the loop like that. What other ones inspired you? Oh, the one that inspired me the most was Canada Coaster Fan. I don't oh. know if you remember him. He, um, I just, because I didn't have any editing skills or anything at the time. He just pretty much went through PowerPoints and just talked about inter interesting things and, and did his rankings and stuff just with a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Sometimes his mic even sounded terrible, which if you look at my 2018 videos, mine also did. Yeah. Now I have a, a nice blue Yeti that hopefully will improve I that. I those too. And then I, went, I, then I stopped using PowerPoint. Now I use Corel. Or I, I use Corel. Then I, I graduated to Adobe back in 2020. 
So that's what I use now. So I got like the, like the top flight editor. I got the top flight mic. So hopefully that's good. Um, so I, I kind of model my channel after him. Okay. Theme Park Crazy is another one I really modeled my yep. channel after. Yep. And then um, I didn't really model myself after Coaster Studios, but um, he was kind of my go-to for coaster stuff yep. when I first got started and just his reviews and everything. Um, it was it was a really good good thing to, to look to to um, kind of get started. Yeah, when I was um, when we were, did the first year of the one two five, I was afraid of heights. So yeah, really. I was definitely like the night before we go to a park, I'd be like, okay, what does this thing look like? Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, and that was you know, uh, coaster force was always mm -hmm. that. like when the kids were little. Paul did not ride anything; he nope. stayed on the ground and held all the bags, and I took the kids on the ride. Yep. So for my son, it was he was born deaf, but now he's losing his vision. So that was give him you know stuff to enjoy. He, now he's eighteen in college. Yeah. Cataract, but still, still mm -hmm. pretty good. But yeah, for me, it was in one eye right yeah. Now. You can get him from the left. <laughs> you you got to sneak up on him, come from the left. But um, he'll never see that coming. No, nope, so, no. Nope. But um, that's how I give him kisses. Now yep, I go exactly. from the left. But um, from there, now I'm no longer afraid of heights. But definitely, uh, I remember we jumped in line for Carowinds. We got there early, and I jumped in line for Intimidator. I had no idea about the staggered seating. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I'm like, why am I out here like this? What's going on? And I was like, all right. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Other ones there. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, sim, 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 sim. Will the Knott's Berry Giga actually happen? Uh, I mean, as long as those uh, plans are legit, then I think it will. Um, obviously, the, the city could nix it. Yeah. But I think they... California. But I mean, they, they, I mean, they, they put so much stuff there already. It's hard to believe that that'd be a deal breaker. So yeah. if they're willing to do it, I think they'll do it. That's yeah, I could be wrong. But it's more about noise. It's more about noise. have to have the red light on the top. And then last but not least, what's your favorite flat ride? Oh, um, I'd have to say Crisanity at Magic Mountain. It's okay. either that or Superman Tower of Power at Six Flags Over Texas. I love the combo towers. Um, but I, I gotta go with Crisanity. Just I had I actually went to Magic Mountain this year, and uh, I had like the most amazing ride on that. And um, it's, it's it's legitimately like the third best ride at Magic Mountain. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a I know Canada's Wonderland's got so many unique flat rides. Yeah. That mm -hmm. yes. when I go there, like the Sledgehammer, you're like okay, I've never seen anything like this mm -hmm. before. So. I got in line for Sledgehammer, then it um, it broke. So I, I didn't get to do any of the flats there, which was unfortunate, but. You know, they had what they had like 15 coasters. And I was trying to ride all of them in one day. So yeah, I, did, I had to sacrifice. You know, I did like three crappy ones in a row, and he was like, We're not doing uh, which one? Oh, the SLC at the end. Yeah. We did the SLC, and he was like, I am not doing the Valari. I'm like, All right, all right. Because yeah. we'll yeah. we did like the Arrow Looper, and then we jumped into the SLC, and then we did one of the crappy wooden ones, and he was like, you're, no way, I'm done. Well, all the right? Valari was the best because the first Valari that you ever did was with me, Soren yeah. Eagle. Uh, and that was good. Um, that one's good. That one doesn't have the ear pads. Exactly. Right. At Coney Island. Yep. Yep. And we went to Rye Playland. And Rye Playland. I was like, that no, was the same why. as the one at Canada's Wonderland. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. I've not heard anything good about the Canada Wonderland. No, but uh, like, we're in line for this Valari. And Paul's like, this ride is terrible. This is going to be horrible. This... And I'm like, I've ridden this before. This ride's actually really fun. Well, you figure Zempera is going to have, like, at their own park. Right. Right. But it was the best like, one it was they just possibly funny have. We were in line. And he's like, there's going to be. And I'm like, I actually like this, like, a flying coaster better than, like, Superman at Great Adventure yeah. because I just think the restraints are more comfortable mm -hmm. until I rode the Valari that was not. Well, at Coney Island. Well, we still lean towards the Flying Dutchman. I actually enjoy the Flying yeah. Dutchman. Me too. Yep. I did, uh, last week, yeah. I did uh, Batman uh, two more times because I don't know how many more times Batwing's going to be around. Yeah. You know, my favorite yeah. defunct coaster, even over Dueling Dragons and everything else, is Firehawk slash X-Flight. Yep. Yeah, Thank I saw you. that. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. we like that one. Uh, Devin, that was actually Devin's favorite because I would marathon Banshee and he'd do Firehawk. Yeah, yeah. that's a weird one too, because like his favorite coasters are are dive coasters. So. Yeah, he likes those too. So, well, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to uh, pause you for a little bit there, but then we're going to say goodbye. Okay. All right, thank you again. Um, you know, thank you so much for everything you do. We love your videos. Yeah, and the fact that you came on, we we're still pretty small in the podcast world. Yeah, but yeah, uh, no, no problem. Yep, we greatly appreciate it. Yep, thanks, guys. Yep. All right, so. That was Chris from Airtime Thrills here. That was here. really fun and exciting. We were Ex really happy to have Chris on. The man knows his stuff. Yeah. And I can honestly say a lot of the times that I watch his videos, I have the same opinion. Like, we were just talking I, about yeah. a few things. Now, our next episode is going to be on Lake Compounds. And we are going for 125. Will we get it there? Well, dashed. <laughs>
That's the title, Dash. You can take that any way you want there. And then after that, May 1st, we're doing a queue, and there's a lot to talk about. We've done – I've been to Bush Gardens twice. I've been to King's Dominion, Six Flags America, Hershey Park, hopefully Great Adventure. And um, Somebody's got to pay the bills. Exactly. And talk about paying the bills. Uh, let's get social. Oh, yeah. If you want to follow us on Facebook or Instagram, you can follow us at 125 Roller Coaster. Like we talked about earlier, we have the YouTube channel now, also 125 Roller Coaster. 124 subscriptions. We're almost at 125, people. We're almost at 125. We also have the new Twitter. Yes, we at do. At 125 Roller Coast. We're hoping Musk gives us the ER. We need the ER. We would like it. Or you can follow us wherever you get your favorite podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on our podcast website, trimmedandstapledpodcast.com. Remember to comment, follow, like. That gets you entered into our drawings for our really cute, fun stuff. All right. Well, I'm Paul. And I'm Janine. I'm going to see you in the queue in 2022.